What's up? Yeah, buddy. What's going on? What's up, big daddy? Nothing. Chilling. Chilling, chilling, chilling. I just got done playing basketball. How'd that feel? <laughs> you smell me? <laughs> yeah, but how did it feel? Oh, I only played, we only played the six. And then who'd you, who'd you play? Aiden. Hopefully you won six nothing. Yeah, it was a shutout. Good. But I was playing in flip-flops, so. Shit, you could be playing on your knees. I crossed them over one time. Yeah. My flip-flop behind me. Blew out. Yep, he, he followed me and won. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is stupid. Maybe I shouldn't be playing this right now. In flip-flops. Maybe go, maybe go barefoot. <laughs> Probably the wiser choice between flip-flops or flip-flops or bare feet. Yeah. What's going on? Nothing, man. What do you want to talk about today? I don't know. We got to introduce ourselves first. I think we already introduced ourselves. I don't. Hey, it's, there might be somebody new out there who doesn't know how wonderful we are. Well, that's true. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Spellman. <laughs> and I'm Chris Schrade. <laughs> and if you really believe that, you should go look at another podcast. <laughs> a little bit of a role another. reversal today. Huh? A little bit of a role reversal today. Sure. That's I'm the strength fine. coach. He's the parent. Okay. I'm both, actually, so I'm good. <laughs> like what I did there? Yes. Another good both. episode that we put up. With one, Which one? I think it was episode 33. He's the strength coach. Was that coach, Owen? Parent. Was that just the two of us, or was that the one with Owen as well? Just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I. Hey, thank God we have real jobs. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> thank God, thank God I didn't fall on my uh, same career. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff we can talk about. We can talk about um, mental health and the Olympics. We can talk about um, the Olympics. We could talk about um, the upcoming school year and how um, people better be ready for what's coming because, well, if you're not prepared by now, it might be a little too late because athletes are already reporting for preseason camp. So, yeah, yeah, a lot, lot to talk about. Better have your stuff locked up already. Yep, it's too, too late. late if you don't. Yep, as I would tell the athletes at Fairfield, you know, at this point, it's now my problem, okay? <laughs> it's my problem now. You had three months to get ready for it. Now, now it's now it's on me. So I got I got to do what I got to do. So, and look, I'm not gonna say we've all been there, but most of us have. I mean, yeah. You know what? You learn your lesson quick. Yeah. You got to come shape ready to go. Yep, but at the same time, like you know, as we talked with. Charlie Melton, I mean, he doesn't have to have them ready until November. And in reality, he doesn't really need them to be really ready until March. <laughs> so, I mean, no need to no need to kill him in September. I mean, all the fall sports, I always told my fall athletes, it's like, you know, you got to be ready when you come to camp because we have two weeks and then you've got a game that counts. I mean, you might have a couple ex exhibition games those two weeks just to break up the monotony, but like you got two weeks, you got 14 days and then they start counting. And I get the, um, your coach, gets, get your the coach gets paid to win. I get the philosophy from a, a strength coach perspective. Um, you know, you're, 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 you're handling the team. You're not really looking at individuals. Your job is to make sure everybody's ready to go. Um, you you want to make sure they're not overtrained. And so, you know, you're, 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 you're timing things out the right way so that you have enough time to get them in shape, but they're also not overtrained. I get that. Yeah. But as an individual who at one point was competing to get more playing time, get a scholarship, you know, 
put up more stats. In my mind, I was always training for those, even by myself, you know, and the times are different because, you know, back then, I think I told you, we didn't even have a strength coach. We, we right. were all strength coaches, you know, and that was good and bad. I learned a lot of things and I little, did a lot of things to myself that were bad. <laughs> but the funny part is most, most, most strength coaches have done bad things to themselves first before the so they know not to do so hopefully they know not to do them to others <laughs> but, but the, my mentality them. was you know and i know there's other people like this is that i gotta train i gotta get bigger i gotta get stronger i gotta get faster because i want to i want to play more i want to get better and if i'm if i'm waiting you know until mid-season to start training or big get get Get, get stronger. Too late. I, I don't know if I could do that. It's too you know, late. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and look, there's some soldiers that will just follow orders and there's other people that will slack off and say, hey, good, I don't have to train. But I, you know, I, I couldn't do that. You know, like I. Usually those people that are slacking off, they're also not playing. Yeah. Or they're very talented and they're not at the level that they should be at. And look, I've said it before, you know, I spent more time in the gym, in the weight room than I did probably on the court, which was, you know, there, there's a, there's a trade off there too. You know, the, you, you can be working on your skills all the time and not train, or you can train too much and not be working on your skills. You know I mean? Either way is an invitation to not play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the coach is going to put the best players on the court that give the team the best chance to win. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when I when I was talking when I was talking with one university about a position, I was like, the athletes didn't come there to play weights. Yeah, they didn't come. They didn't come there to be in the weight room and run and all that stuff that I'm going to make them do. But it's up to me as a strength coach to implore and explain to them why it's so important. And I just got done training a couple high school kids, and it was like, and all we did was work on jumping and landing today two very basic and uh, rediment kind of base kind of foundation exercises that a lot of people forget to do jumping and landing. If you don't, it's do like, it, you're going to get hurt. Well, it's like, it's like a car that has all gas and no brakes. I mean, if you don't have brakes, I don't care what kind of car you have. The car is going to get hurt at some point. Cause you know, I say this a lot, the majority of injuries, don't happen from starting or from jumping. They hurt from stopping. They happen from stopping and landing. You know, very few injuries happen from actual jumping and then, or starting the run. They usually happen stopping or landing because of the force. I mean, you're producing force and then you're absorbing force. If you can produce more force than your body can absorb, usually that's a recipe for disaster. So, you know, obviously what you're doing, you're, you're trying to strengthen certain muscles for that. But at the same time, you're also coordinating nerves to, 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 to line the body up the right way. And, you know, um, the, the bones and the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles are all lining up a certain way in alignment to work correctly. Right? Yeah. How much injury would you say is actually from lack of strength versus lack of alignment or lack of coordination. So I, it's funny because I put this up on one of the mirrors at uh, the gym that I work at now and I strong things don't break. <laughs> so, I mean, you can correct a lot of problems by getting stronger, but you can also, pre you can also present a lot of problems by being too strong. I mean, as, as we talked with uh, Jay DeMeo, at what point is strong enough? You know, is it two and a half times your body weight on a squat? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, but I think it also depends on the individual. But I think there is definitely a kinesthetic awareness that all athletes have to have so that they can put themselves in proper body alignment when they're, when they're moving and that they're more spatially, spatially aware of what they're doing 
so that they don't present, they don't open up that opportunity or present that opportunity to get injured. So I think, I think they go hand in hand. Um, you know, you do need to be, you know, it's like the lab puppy who's got, you know, big arm, got all the paws and all the legs and doesn't know how to move around. I mean, that's kind of like your freshman, your eighth grader, freshman, sophomore in high school. They got these arms and legs and they don't know what to do with it. And then once you get. That's exactly where Aiden is right now. He's just, yeah. his hands, his arms, his legs are just growing. You know, he's, when he, when he tries to do yoga, it, he looks like a squiggly line. <laughs> he looks, he looks, well, he's instead of, instead, of outside. Instead, of an un, instead of an uncooked noodle, he's a cooked noodle. <laughs> yeah. Last night it was like, oh, my arm hurts. I'm like, you're growing. But this doesn't feel like growing pains. I'm like, you're just going through growing. So you don't know what growing pains is like. I'm like, it's growing pains. Oh, oh my leg is hurting me. I'm like, dad, that's because you're growing and like you're out of alignment right now. Yeah. I you mean, yoga today? No. What? Yeah. Do you yoga today? No. Hey, it's the same reason you don't have to tell tell him probably not to touch a hot stove anymore. He probably touched a hot stove once and burnt his hand. Hey, I mean, it's like at what point at what point do I have to tell you every day what to do? I mean, at some point it comes down to you you need to do you. I mean, yeah. like I, I don't go around and tell my children kind of what they have to do. It's like, you know, you got you know you have practice, you know you're gonna run. Have you done what you needed to do? You know, and when they come back and go, man, that practice was hard. I'm going, yeah, because you're not in shape. I mean, like, I, I'm not going to come home and tell you, you have to go work out. You want to go work out? We'll go work out. I mean, I'll, I'll offer it up to you, but I want it to get to the point where you ask me to work out. Like, I don't want to be the one asking you because I'm going to get my workout in because it helps me as we've discussed as many times, it helps me with my mental health. You know, doing hard stuff every day is good for you. It makes you not, it makes you not worry about all the small little bullshit that you worry about when you don't do hard things. When you do hard things, you don't worry about all the little bullshit that happens every day. You just don't care. <laughs> he's got a, um, he's got a tryout coming up next week. It's his first. What? It's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's a basketball team. Nice. But it's his first real tryout, you know, and they're going to run. Well, yeah, and yeah, they're gonna, yeah, and and there's probably returning kids on the team that have been there already. So you know, we're in a new state. Nobody knows yep. who he is, you know, and it's a it's a bigger state, bigger town. So you know, California is bigger than Connecticut. Yeah, and the towns are we're into. We're in a small town here, and it's thirty thousand. That's the size of Fairfield in Connecticut, I think. You know, which is you as you know, there's two high schools there. It's it's big. Yeah. It's a lot of kids. It's it's a lot of competition. Well, you know, what, all those kids, all, all those kids in, out in San Diego, they've been playing since day one. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's going to be interesting because I've been I've been telling them like you know I've been using it as a training tool. Hey, you got to get ready for this. You got two weeks. You know, you got to get some jump shots in. Definitely some ball handling. You know, you got to get make sure you're in shape. You know, so you can run. Um, and I, and I, as a father, I, I'm, I'm hoping he makes the team. That's, that's why I'm putting him through it. But if he doesn't, it's going to be a learning lesson. And I look back on my career and I had this discussion with another father that had a similar story. And um, I made every team that I tried out for up and through college. I had an incredible experience in high school. We went to the state championship three out of four years. The one year we didn't, we lost in the semifinals. We won two state championships. And then I go to college and we won a total of 10 games. And that includes the year I redshirted and didn't play at all. You know, I had a back injury. I had the red shirt. I got my scholarship taken away. I had to earn it back. It was, it was a completely different look than high school. And it was tough to swallow. And some of those scars followed me around for a while because I didn't know what it was to, to lose or to not make a team or anything or to be in that situation. But 
it's not a bad thing, you know, especially. It's part, the, it's part of the problem with the kids today is that their, their parents don't let them fail. I, I, I had failed, you know, but I'm just saying that, you know, that experience. No, but, but what I'm saying is, is like your parents let you fail. Yeah. They didn't go, they didn't go and blame the coach. They didn't go and blame anybody else. They told you to work harder. Yeah. You know, if you don't want that to happen again, work harder. I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward as, as the Sorenex uh, bar says from Cam Haynes, nobody cares, work harder. I mean, it's, it's, but now you have all these helicopter parents that are around and if their kid doesn't make the team, it's because the coach has it out for them. Yeah. And they're doing everything they can to, to jockey their way onto a team or in a certain position or more playing time. And you know what? It's bullshit. It really we is. Had a, we had a rec league at the, at the, at the New Canaan YMCA and the director tried to make it so that people couldn't play on the same team. Like you couldn't put together a super team. So we had different tryout times and you had to put down like your three times that you could come to be evaluated. Well, guess what? All the parents got together and they're like, well, what time can you all get evaluated? So like they, they worked the system so that all their, all, all, all of Johnny and Joey's could play on the same team because they wanted to win. They wanted to win the new Canaan YMCA rec league. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, like, and I, I would sit in his office every day because we shared an office together and I'd pay, I, I, you gotta be kidding me. Like he was trying to do it. He was trying to do it the right way, but the parents kind of like worked the system so that all of the, all of the better athletes and better basketball players could all be on the same team. It was silly. That's, that's ridiculous. And you know what, that, that's, that's, that's just, that's special. Right? Sad. <laughs> Something maybe even a little more understandable, right? Is that father or mother who's trying to get their kid into a certain position, right? Because let's take baseball, for instance. You know, if your kid's not playing shortstop or pitching or catching and he's not getting – you know, those are kind of specialized positions. I, all well, you baseball guys out there, don't make fun of me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I know, I know, I know just a little bit. I, I don't claim to know a lot, but I could tell this much. I know there's certain positions where you got to get a lot of reps in. And if there's someone better than your kid or whatever, they're, they're in that position that you want your kid to play and he's not playing it he's not getting the time under tension there, you know, and it, and, 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 and it's the, it's the whole uh, concept. Um, what's the Matt Malcolm Gladwell book? Uh, outliers. outliers. First chapter about the Canadian hockey players, how they were last January through March. Yep. Three right? months. And, and the whole idea was that they were just had that little bit more of, height or strength, you know, or matureness where they got on the better teams and playing in that better competition is what got them better. Well, the same idea in basketball or, or baseball, if you're not playing shortstop all the time, you know, you're not playing against a good competition in that position, or you're not pitching, or if you're not playing point guard, if you want your kid to be point guard and he's not playing point guard and he's not going up against those better teams over and over and over again, Jockeying them into place somehow, being in the system, gives your kid that advantage. I've seen it play out a lot of times. I mean, look at look at look at all the parents that hold their kids back in kindergarten and first grade. Yeah. I mean, or or the the newer thing is the PG year. You know, taking that post grad year in between high school and college. I mean, it's not be, it's not because they need to get more education. It needs. I mean, I would have been a prime example of post-grad year for me would have been perfect no 17 year old male should be going to college we're just not mature enough no we're not you know so you know but my parents were like they had the option of either putting me in school early or holding me back a year where i i went from 
I could have been the, I was one of the youngest in my classes, or I could have been the oldest in my class. And my parents are like, nope, he's going to school, whatever. Yeah. So I, it's well, just. Autumn's, Autumn's going to be in the same league. And, it, you know, she started kindergarten at four. You know, she was born in December, which yep. means that she's going to be in college at 17. Yep. And when we moved to California. Nobody her age was actually in kindergarten yet. And I was like, okay, maybe this could work. But she had already been through 110 days of school. We ended up getting her in. So, so she's still going to be 17 when she's in college. I didn't dodge that bullet, but I guarantee you she will have a doctorate in shit kicking ability when she does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, it's, you know it's, like, it's, like your example of the, of the new Canaan, like, that that that's perfect those are helicopter parents they don't get a chance to ever lose they're always winning because you constructed the team a certain way the other but example also, like, but you're teaching these kids that the rules don't apply to them yeah like we don't have to follow the rules because we got a little bit of money and we and we figured out the system yeah whatever good luck good luck in life yeah but you know the other the other one it's a little bit more, you know, it, it's almost, it makes you wonder if you're not doing that for your kid, if you're doing the right thing. Like if he's not on the right team, you know, do I teach yeah, him I think sportsmanship? Do I teach him sportsmanship and make him work harder and make him um, feel, you know, what it's like to sit on the bench and, and have to earn his position, you know, but maybe, no matter what he does or how much he does, he'll never earn that position because of the people, kids that are there. Do you keep your kid there or do you move him? It, it's a legitimate question. So Drew, Drew plays goalie for soccer. Um, last year, he finished dead last in every team run. Every every team run, dead last. Um, he had he has a now a senior playing goalie. Go, the goalie's been. I think the starting goalie has been the varsity starting goalie since he was a sophomore. So what did Drew do? Drew got in better shape. He's been running consistently. He can run a sub six minute mile now. He ran two miles the other day in like 1240, something ridiculous. Um, and he, miles on his and, birthday. But and he's learning and he's learning to play different position because he wants to play. He's like, they're not going to give me a shot at goalie because there's a senior captain starting goalie. So I'm going to learn how to play another position out in the field. So he's taking time. He goes to the field by himself. He works on passing the ball against a bench or if one of his buddies, they'll go and they'll go and have a kick, you know, they'll work on some stuff, but like he knew that, like, like, that's on him. Like he wants to play. He asked me what he should do. And I told him like, this is what you're going to do. You, you either need to beat, you either need to beat out the starting senior captain goalie. When you're, when you're not given a shot to play goalie at all in the summer league, hasn't played one game in golf, all of summer league, because whatever, or you need to just play a different position for a year. So he's going to play a different position and he'll, and he'll start on the, he'll be the starting JV goalie. Okay. What has he learned? He's learned, he's learned hard work. Yeah. And then sometimes even though you work hard and do everything right, life still ain't fair. So yeah, move on. Well, that's true. But, but time is a factor, you know? Yeah. Um, take for instance, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, there, there was uh, there was a set of three basketball camps at the beginning of summer and then one in the beginning of August. The one beginning of August, Allegedly, it was supposed to be like a, a guard and big man camp, but they were reversing roles. So if you were a big man, you were going to be a guard. And if you were a guard, you were going to be a big man. And Aiden's like, should I tell him I'm a guard so I can play big man? I'm like, no, no. I'm like, why? He's like, because I'm, I'm a big man. I'm going to be a big man. I'm like, no, you're not, kid. I'm like, I'm 6'4". Maybe you'll be 6'4". Maybe you'll be 6'5". You're going to be a guard, a point guard or a two guard. Sorry. That's what you're going to do. And if you don't learn how to dribble and shoot now, and he, all you're doing is big man moves, you know, from sixth grade to eighth grade, then you get into high school. 
you're, you're done. Like that timing is critical. I know yeah. because I was a big man, you know, and then I'm in college and I'm six, four. And just cause I went to the weight room and, you know, put up some weight, I've got to play against six, eight, three twenty at six, four, two fifteen during the summer. And maybe, two days maybe. into to basketball, I was 195 again. Maybe, maybe instead of going to the gym, you should have worked on your handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. You're 100 percent right. <laughs> I think I think we cracked that code. <laughs> Absolutely, 100. percent But that's but that's again that's that's the that's the balance. I mean, you look at like guys in the NBA like a Ben Simmons. I mean, who grew to be six eight. I mean, you look at it like a LeBron who, I mean, he's, he's a freak. I mean, once again, when you're talking about the NBA, you're talking about the 0.01%. I yeah. mean, so like to say, to say your kid's going to be at that level. I mean, God bless him if he is or she is or whatever, but like, I've always wanted my athletes that I've worked with just to be good people. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, your athletics will take care of itself. But if you're a bad person and you're a great athlete, who cares? Like, you're still a bad person. I, I don't care. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, it's like, what are you going to do when the when the ball stops bouncing? Because yeah. at some point, it's going to stop. It's going to stop yeah. for everybody. I mean, even Tom Brady. I mean, at some at some point in his career, it's going to be over. Yeah. I mean, are you a good person after that? Because that that's all that anybody's really going to care about. It's almost like as an athlete, you've got to live in two realities. Yeah. Like you got to know that concrete possibility at the end of the tunnel, but you also have to be shooting for the stars and not letting anyone get in your way at the same time. It's the weirdest duality that you have to live in. Yep. But by the time, by the time they're at that elite level, they already know that there's an end. They already know there's an end point. They just don't know when it's coming. Father time, father time and mother nature are undefeated. <laughs> yeah. They have, they have yet to lose. It's true. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, I don't want it to happen to anybody, but I mean, at some point Tom Brady is not going to see that blind side hit. Yeah. But you he's know? also going to keep going as long as we can, as long as he can. And that's yeah. why would that, you? that's the whole thing about pushing the envelope and, 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 you know, evolving more as, as humans, like you, going, you gotta, going to, Go until the wheels fall off. Yeah. I mean, I always told my college kids, I'm like, if you have a chance to go play in Europe, go play and play until you can't play anymore. I've got a, a former female, a former female soccer player. She's in her early to mid thirties. She's still playing professionally in Sweden. Okay. I mean, get after it. I mean, the Laker, the average age, the average age for the Lakers this year is 31. 31. And, and they've already told everybody, keep keep bringing our age up. Just keep bringing it up. We'll take it. We'll use it as fuel. I mean, I'm pretty sure those guys that are playing that are older than 35, they know how to take care of their bodies pretty good. So don't worry about them. They'll be fine because they're not going to the clubs. They're not putting all the poison in their body. They're going home, taking care of the kids, getting their eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Making sure they're hydrated, making sure they're recovered, so they can go out and whip that twenty-year-old ass. <laughs> sure it is. Hey, I, I'll I'll put my I'll put my money on the Lakers this year. I got no problem with that. Have you ever sir, heard the song "Invincible" by Tool? Um, probably. Came out about maybe two or three years ago. Um. It's fantastic for what we're talking about right now. It's an allegory of a, an old warrior who's starting to feel his age. Okay. And, um, but he's still trying to be relevant in what he's doing. He's still tra chasing after his, his dreams, even though he knows that it's a false reality. You got to listen to it. it it's, it the, the way they are you listening to it right now yeah the way they write their songs sorry Cole. don't sue me <laughs> the way they write their songs it's uh it leaves a lot of um it's open to interpretation 
you could kind of see what they're going, where they're going, but it's, it's very open to interpretation. It could go a lot of different ways. And sometimes there's dual or triple meanings and they never, they never kiss and tell, they never tell what, what it's really about, you know, yeah. so a little mystery behind it. But I think the album came out when I was, when I started uh, coaching the travel team, uh, the fourth grade travel team a couple of years ago. And as your pregame song. No, no, it, no, no. <laughs> Play a little tool. Play a little tool for the fourth graders. No, nah, because you know it was emotional. Because I was, it was you know it was it was me realizing that, yeah, you know, and, and it was kind of the time where I I was, I wasn't training as much anymore either in martial arts. So it was, it was it was it was me trying to teach what I've learned through all these years to these kids kids. And that was me trying to remain relevant, right? It was like this old warrior still trying to do things, you know, still reaching for the stars. And um, the more and more I thought about it, it, like I was telling you the other day, it's it's kind of this, the circle of the cycle of life, right? I mean, us at this age, like you were just saying, the average age at the Lakers is 31 and that's old, you know? you're not going to see it. You're probably not going to see an average of 35 or, or more. Like they're done. Like who's the oldest in the league right now? Is it Garnett? Probably LeBron. Now who's, uh, who's the guy in the, on the, uh, on the Nets? Is it Garnett? No, Garnett's not in the league anymore. Somebody not, was. No, huh? Durant, Durant, Durant's not older than LeBron. LeBron's older. Anyways, I know there was someone that was like 43 that maybe just retired. But anyways, you know, that, that, that's it. But, but what do you do? Because your instincts to compete are still there. Yeah. And what's the next step? Well, for professional athletes, coaching or broadcasting, you know, a college or, or a, a professional team. You know, for us regular guys, for me, it's coaching fourth graders. But like – it's almost it, it's it's in biologically ingrained in us to keep competing, even if that's coaching the next generation, teaching the next generation. That that's still us competing the way we did when we were younger, and that's what keeps the human race going. Yeah, I mean every every generation should be there to challenge the next generation coming behind them. I mean, I want, I want my, I want my daughter and my sons to do better than I did. I mean, yeah. that's, my, that's my job as a parent, my parent, and my job, my, my parents job was to make sure that I did better than them. Yep. And I think it's either this generation or the last generation that is going to be the first generation to not do better than their parents. In terms of what? Um, wealth, happiness, pretty much everything, you know, because what's really happened is like our generation and the generation, actually the generation after us who are our parents now, they're not going to do better than we have done. So, I mean, that's not a good, that's not a good thing. That's, you know, it's not, it's just facts. It's like, well, there's, there's that duality again. Maybe that's the fact, but I'm not letting that happen. I know no. you're not letting that happen. Hell no. I mean, I, my, the other day, Drew was like, I can beat you in basketball. I was like, all right, you want to play? We'll play half court. We'll play, we'll play $5 a point. Make it, take it. We'll play to 11. He's like, I'll just run around you. I'm like, I'll just let you shoot. You got 55 bucks in your pocket? I don't need 55. He does. No, but you do now. Did you play? No, we haven't played yet. Oh, so I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not worried about him. I'm not worried about him. <laughs> I'm not worried about him at all. It's like, and I can't. I can't really even move. If I could, if I could move like I was when I was forty, not even when I was thirty. If I could move the way I could when I was forty, I'd kill him. Like, it wouldn't even be. It wouldn't even be a contest. He's he's just talking that trash because he knows his dad can't move. But whatever. Uh, the oldest active NBA player is Udonis, Udonis Haslam. When did Gar didn't Garnett play for the Nets? Uh, yeah, but not recently. 
Udonis Haslam is 41 years old. So, here we go with that. You want to talk about Simone Biles at all? Yeah, let's talk about Simone Biles. All right. First, I got, about, I got about five minutes. Okay, first and foremost, she's one of the best athletes ever, period. 100%. Okay, second of all, second of all, it didn't come out till later that her aunt passed away before the Olympics. Yep. Okay, so for any one of us, and for anybody that's listening who ever has had a loved one pass away and then goes and tries and perform at the highest level, good luck. I mean, so nobody – Nobody can tell Simone how to take care of Simone besides Simone. And I think what she did was very, a very hard decision for her. I think looking back at it, maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, she might regret it. But I think she did what she thought she had to do for her best health and well being. And I applaud and I applaud her for that. Because going into the Olympics, it was all about her. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Gymnastics is different than basketball. It's different than any sport. There's a lot of risk involved, you know. And I just learned about the twisties this, these past two weeks. You know, that's very interesting. And scary as a father, because Autumn just started gymnastics. I'm like, oh, wait. They literally have to learn how to shut off a switch in their brain that is there to protect them. Fuck that. <laughs> now now imagine you're 12 to 15 feet off the ground. Yeah. And you don't know where you are. Yeah. Good luck. But I will say this though. I will say this. The discussion in the world right now, in, in America especially, there's no room for dissenting opinions, which is fucking bullshit. There was a guy that I played basketball with on Facebook, just asked a simple question. Hey, what is Simone doing? You know, she's an athlete. At what line do you, do, where, where do you draw the line between, you know, being mentally strong and having to, you know, you're part of being an athlete is being mentally strong. You know, and he said, you know, I went through a lot of things as an athlete. You know, I, I, I had to, you know, you know, you know, fuck up and get through things. And, and we all have. And, and that's a legitimate question. That's a legitimate thing to say. But he got fucking bashed on Facebook like he shouldn't open his mouth. And that's not right. I mean, look, at, 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 at the end of the day, it, if you're an athlete and, and you're, you're a normal human being and, and you weigh both sides of any equation, you're going to come to the conclusion that even before it came out that she, you know, her, her aunt died, you're going to come to the conclusion that, all right, she's already been to the top. She's got probably a lot of things going on. If she thinks that she has a mental issue that's going to interfere with her performance, maybe not even her performance, but her safety, right? I mean, I, I maybe, maybe that's the, the question right there. You know, what was she, did she stop not, did she not compete because she thought it was going to affect her performance or perfect her, you know, or, 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 or her safety? That's that's a big difference. I mean, if if it's going to affect your safety, you you that's it. You know, I, and maybe that's what that guy's question was. You know, if you think you're in a bad mental state and it's going to affect your performance, that's different. But at the end of the day, nobody should be bashed for their opinion. You you have your opinion, you say it, you discuss it like a normal human being. You know, what is this cancel culture bullshit? But most most people can't relate to the level that Simone Biles is at. Nobody can. There's I mean, nobody. That, there's barely you anyone. Look at it, you look at it, at Novak Novak Djokovic. A couple days after uh, Simone Simone withdrew, he uh, he he posted like, "Pressure is a privilege," and then he destroys his racket in the bronze medal match because he lost. <laughs> like. Dude, you're such a fucking hypocrite. Like, part part of my language, but it's like you're talking about you're bashing one of the all time greats. And yeah, Novak, you're one of the greats as well in tennis. And I'm not taking that away from you, but you you can't talk about whatever Simone was going through. I mean, because at the end of the day, you're not 12 feet off the ground 
trying to do flips and twists and not land on your head and break your neck. You're hitting a ball, you're hitting a ball across the net. I mean, you know what? You also shouldn't be going into the Olympics philosophizing about mental health. You should be in his state, which is almost, uh, you know, he, he was, he was predatory. He wasn't being a empathetic person stepping back because he's getting ready to go into the Olympics. And I'm not justifying what he, what he said, but I, I think that's what we're discussing here is like this, there's, there's two different mindsets as, as an athlete. You, you, you have to see reality sometimes. And the other times you have to put blinders on to reality and think you're invincible. But at the same time, I mean, like I said, I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody can relate to what Simone was going through. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Nobody. I mean, I agree. so it's like, it's like, yeah, you're entitled to your opinion, but under, understand your opinion doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. No. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to her health and well-being and the people that love and care for her. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's it. It doesn't matter about you, me, or anybody else. I mean, she's still going to go down as the greatest freaking gymnast of all time. Because the stuff she does, the stuff she does, most guys can't do. And I'm not saying most guys like you and me. I'm saying most guys gymnast. Yeah. You and I can't do, level gymnast. You and I can't do what she does. <laughs> you know, and I think... I, and I, I, I wouldn't I, even play my son one on one in sandals this uh, a couple an hour ago. Yeah, I'm not going to try <laughs> to shit he does. Exactly. So it's like, you know, all these, all these, all these, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks saying, "Oh, she shouldn't have done this. She shouldn't have done this." Like, just you know, keep your opinion to yourself. I mean, I know you said the other thing. Like, yeah, you're entitled to your opinion, but understand your opinion doesn't matter at all. <laughs> you know, I think there's probably like five people that could relate to whatever Simone was going through. And that's like ever. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, I hope I, I, you know, I, I think she handled it the right way. I think she handled it what, what was best for her. And, you know, we've talked about mental health on our show multiple times, plenty of times. And I think, you know, athletes have a better understanding that, you know, they need to take care of themselves and they need to do what's best for themselves, no matter what, because yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the sport's going to be not there anymore. It's not going to be there. Yeah. So, you and know, she, uh, she came back and what she, she got a bronze balance being bronze, right? Yeah. I mean, which oh, oh people, she only got the bronze. Pet. How many, how many people listening? How many people, how many people listening to us have won a, an Olympic medal? I, I read through a, a part. And if you, if you have won an Olympic medal and are listening to us, we'd love to have you on. Yeah. But I, I was reading a partial article. I think it was, it was some, it was some guy who was re, writing for Sports Illustrated and his daughter was in the Olympics. She was a swimmer. Swimmer. Yep. Right. And, and he's going through like the whole list of things that she had to do and the team she had to make and the things she had to win to get to that silver medal. You can say things saying silver medal. Oh, she didn't win. But the stuff she had to do to get there, yeah. it's ridiculous. What most people, what most people in our country don't realize is that the, the fastest swim meet every year or every Olympic year is the U.S. Olympic trials. It's faster than the Olympics. Interesting. Because there's only two athletes that make every individual event. And then every once in a while, four to six make it, depending on the relays. So it's the fastest. It's much faster than the Olympics. Like, because they only take two people in every event. Where, like, the third place, the third place finisher in most of the U.S. Olympic trials would obviously place in the top 16 at the Olympics. I got to, I got to, uh, fairly, fairly easily, by the way. I got to wave the, the American flag here a little bit. I mean, I love all the other countries. It, it's, the Olympics is great. But how about the men's and women's 400 uh, by four relay? Both the men's and women's winning gold by miles. 
Yeah, but then the men, the men, Both the men, are fast. But the men's four by one hundred doesn't qualify for the finals. I mean, come on. I, I just there's some things that need to be reworked. I would really be interested in a stat where how many athletes that won Olympic medals actually went to school in the United States? Because <laughs> I'd like to see. No, I'd really like to see like. If the NCA were if the NCA were was their own country, how many medals would they have won? Because it's probably a lot. Yeah, probably a lot. Interesting. That's a good point. You know, so I mean, I think people need to understand that, like, even though there's a lot of countries that are winning medals now, a lot of them are winning medals off of the American um, educational system. <laughs> And speaking of that, ooh, we got a whole new topic. The SEC bringing Texas and Oklahoma to the Southeast Conference. Here we go. It's coming. Four super, four super leagues, four you super conferences. It's coming. It. Hey, the athletes are getting paid now. You got the quarterback at Alabama going to make over $800,000 this year. Wow. Yep. On top of his scholarship. That's crazy. Here we go. It's gonna, it's gonna get, it's gonna get so weird. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> good, All right, good. let's leave it there. You got a lot of, you got a lot of good, good guests coming up soon, don't you? Oh, we got, yeah, we got some hitters coming. I Mark, mean, Mark is talent acquisition on uh, athlete hackers, by the way. Yeah, it's m mostly because Mark doesn't care if somebody says no to him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we got, yeah, we got, I reached out to a, a bunch of people in the last week or two. Um, everybody's excited to come on and talk. So we got some, we got some heavy hitters coming on, um, talking about everything as we always do. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, stay in touch and keep listening. And as always, you know, all my best, God bless, you know, take care of yourself. I if you're uh, listening to us on whatever you're listening to or watching us, you can check us out on Apple, Google, Anchor, Breaker, YouTube. Check us Bye. out on all the channels. And we're going to be breaking some of our content down into smaller clips. So watch for that on YouTube. My name is Chris Schrade. I am Mark Spellman, and we are Athlete Hackers. As always, all my best. God bless. And... Peace. Peace.